Taylor was liked by everybody. Everybody. How family and friends of a Central Kentucky teenager killed in a crash honored him at his school today. One Central Kentucky man says it's his worst fear come true. How a severe storm put a huge dent in his business. Police are noticing a change in DUI arrest in many parts of Kentucky. A WKYT investigation found alcohol isn't the biggest cause anymore. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. He was just weeks away from graduating high school, but a Casey County teenager's life came to a tragic end. Investigators say that 17-year-old Taylor Woods died Friday afternoon in a crash while riding his motorcycle. Today, his classmates at Casey County High wanted to make sure that he's not forgotten. Sam Smith shows us how they honored Taylor in our top story at 6. Students and staff at Casey County High School are mourning the loss of Taylor Woods. That grief is a normal feeling, and if if something like that should occur and we don't feel grief, then we something's not right. Woods was 17 years old and a senior here. Along with a moment of silence, his classmates were able to express their grief by writing messages on posters, saying things like "rest in peace" and "too young." More than 100 members of the senior class gathered outside to release balloons in his honor, and his family watched on. Taylor was liked by everybody. Everybody. Donna Wood says her son planned to take a road trip to Florida after graduation and then find a job. He loved riding his motorcycles. He's had motorcycles since he was five, six years old. <laughs> he loved shooting pool. We played in pool tournaments. Um, he was just, he loved helping people. She says that's why he was a junior firefighter in Lincoln County. <laughs> Taylor's been a blessing since he was born. The Woods family appreciates what the school did today, but say he never liked to be the center of attention. And he was quiet and shy. Smile. He could, he could sit with you all day. And, and never say a word. Not say nothing, just <laughs> smile at you. He didn't have to say uh, He'd just smile. <laughs> in Casey County, Sam Smith, WKYT. A wonderful young man there. Taylor's funeral will be in the gym of Casey County High School Wednesday afternoon at 4 o'clock. Visitation is tomorrow at McKinney and Brown Funeral Home. Severe thunderstorms dropped large hail on parts of the bluegrass over the weekend, and tonight we're getting a better look at some of the damage it caused. Hail left dents and even cracked windshields on many cars at a car lot in Madison County. Sean Moody talked to the owners of the business new at 6. Luke Linville doesn't know yet exactly how much it's going to cost to repair all this hail damage. He said he's got about 14 vehicles with damage and his insurance doesn't cover it. County Lawn Auto Sales in Madison County isn't a big place. The sign over the door promises no hassle, but owner Luke Linville has found himself in a lot more than just a hassle. You don't have no comprehensive, you know, that, uh, you know, a hailstorm or a tornado or is your, you know, is your worst fear. Saturday evening, that fear came rolling through. This was probably baseball size or bigger. As you can see it's literally bigger than your fist. Linville said he had about 14 cars out here. Literally every vehicle that we have, you know, is damaged. And I don't care how good you are, there's no dent doctor that can take stuff like this out and like this out. And he says it's not just this. He works on his own. His son used to help him until a few weeks ago when he died. My son that I just lost was a lot of help to me. Uh, and he was, that's, uh, that's been the hardest and still is. He doesn't know where he's going from here. He's turning to the one thing he says he can count on. I don't know what the future holds, but I do know that my Lord and Savior holds the future. I do know that. You know, we have to try to go off. You know, you can't just give up. Linville said this hail also damaged his home, but his insurance does cover that. In Madison County, Sean Moody, WKYT. Linville said he hopes to still sell some of those cars, but he's not sure how much the hail damage will knock off their values. A Whitley County family has been forced out of their home because of a landslide. Emergency managers say heavy rain this month caused a landslide that pulled a large tree down against a home on Freeman Hollow Road. As a precaution, they told the people who live there to leave the home because they think the tree will eventually give way. Well, the weather has been much calmer today, but it is expected to be chilly tonight. Chief Meteorologist Chris 
Chris Bailey has an early look at your forecast. You know, a lot of folks, Amber, this morning waking up to a little frost out there with temperatures down into the low and mid 30s. We could do that all over again tomorrow as those temperatures settle down into the 30s. Current temperatures and live sky cams from across the area, most thermometers running into the upper 50s and the low 60s. We've been seeing a little more cloud cover this afternoon compared to how we started out the day. We started out the day with a full sun. Now the clouds beginning to filter on into town. Let's take you through your hour by hour forecast, show you where thermometers are starting later this evening. We hit the fast forward button on your back porch thermometer. By 11 o'clock, most areas down into the mid 40s. First thing tomorrow morning, how about some mid 30s? Those sheltered valleys could be closer to freezing. We had a few sp uh, spots right at or a little below freezing early this morning. Again, that could cause a little frost out there. Green thumbs, you know the drill by now. Life first alert defender, nothing going on across central and eastern Kentucky. Weather headlines, potential for a little frost overnight. We're tracking some showers into the hour by hour forecast. And also, guys, Derby weekend. Looking a little warmer, but will it come with a stormy price? Seven day forecast in just a matter of minutes. For the fourth time in recent weeks, a prisoner has walked away from the Blackburn Correctional Complex here in Lexington. Prison leaders say that Charles Blanton walked away last night. He was serving time on drug charges. Tonight, Blanton is still on the run. With four walkaways from Blackburn lately, how does that compare to other minimum security prisons in neighboring states? Victor Puente has the story. According to the Department of Corrections, four men have walked away from the prison behind me in the last five weeks. That number is even more surprising when compared to the prison systems in surrounding states. Neighbors tell us they watch the inmates go back and forth across the grounds, a privacy fence, the only thing separating their yards from the prison yard. They should have more security. They should have better lights. And it's dangerous because there's, there's children around here. There's a bunch of children around here. Jail officials say the men housed there are all within 48 months of either completing their sentence or seeing a parole board. In 2014, WKYT reported on at least eight walkaways from the prison. Correction officials don't want to call them escapes, pointing out there are no fences to escape from. By comparison, the entire state of Tennessee saw four escapes from 2013 to 2015. All four were at minimum security facilities. Ohio doesn't have 2014 numbers yet, but in the three years before that, they saw five escapes among maximum and minimum security prisons. In Virginia, the Department of Corrections told us they've had no escapes over the last three years, although they did have a prisoner escape from a hospital. We asked Kentucky's Department of Corrections for statewide numbers. They told us they wouldn't be ready until tomorrow. They also released a statement saying they consider all escapes serious and conduct reviews of their policies following every incident and say the review at Blackburn is still underway. Blackburn officials say the number of walkaways this year would have been one higher, but a man attempting to leave the grounds in January was caught before he could get off the property. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. The four most recent inmates to walk away from Blackburn were serving time for charges ranging from manufacturing meth to burglary and robbery. A Fayette County judge has ruled a Lexington business had the right to refuse to print T-shirts for the city's Gay Pride Festival. Circuit Judge James Ishmael's ruling overturns a decision by the Lexington Human Rights Commission. The commission claimed that hands-on originals violated a city law that bans discrimination against gays. But the judges ruled that the Human Rights Commission went beyond its authority. In 2012, the business refused to print the T-shirts, citing its Christian beliefs. The judge said that Hands On Original's decision was based on the message of the Pride Festival and not sexual orientation. The Human Rights Commission says it may appeal the judge's decision. When most people hear DUI, they probably think of alcohol, but that is changing so fast in some areas that police say they can't remember the last time they pulled someone over for drinking and driving. WKYT investigative reporter Miranda Combs takes us to Whitley County where pills are driving the DUIs. There has been a shift here in this southern Kentucky town, and Sergeant Brandon White has been a witness to it. Over time, it's changed. You know, it's you just it's very rare to get a, an alcohol-related DUI. It's all drugs, they say. So it's pills? It's all pills. It's all pills. White and Chief Wayne Bird met with us on a Friday evening. Days and times really don't matter, though, they say. Oh, daily. Uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's daily. 
when you're dealing with drugs. Alcohol DUIs are almost non-existent here. I mean, everything we deal with is drug-related DUIs. He is suspended DUI first. DUI suspended. Yeah. 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 It took less than 10 minutes of patrolling with Sergeant White to get a possible drug DUI. This man doesn't know it, but Sergeant White is a specialist on the topic of drug DUIs. Yeah, let's just walk here in front of my car, okay? He's a certified drug recognition expert. There's not many in the state. They make up less than 1% of the state's police officers. Just don't want you to just look at the top of my pen there, okay? He's been trained extensively in being able to figure out what a driver on drugs okay. has been taking. So you've been driving today? Yeah. This man passed the initial field sobriety test. He, he did admit that he had been taking some prescription medication, but based on the test, he's not to the point where we can arrest him for being impaired. But they did arrest him for driving on a suspended DUI license. Last year, Sergeant White alone arrested 51 people in Williamsburg for driving under the influence of drugs. His expertise takes time. If he's conducting a sobriety test, it will take a couple of hours. That's time off the streets to try to solve one case. I might have a good idea of what they're on, you know, just me thinking and going through it, but they could be on two or three different types of drugs, you know, so I have to, it takes that length of time before you can reach the best conclusion. His beliefs are verified with blood tests. Here's a catch though in Kentucky. If the blood alcohol concentration is 0 0.10 or above, that's the end of the test. There are no further tests. Unless the arresting officer requests additional tests for drugs. So there could be more drug related DUIs out there that are never reported. If they are um, at a high enough alcohol level that that, that is their impairment, then, then yes, I'll stop. But lately, at least here in Williamsburg, the drugs are weighing heavy. It would really scare you to know the way. Uh, somebody's under the influence of prescription drugs versus alcohol, the way they operate on the highway. I mean, it, it would scare you to know. As for the number of drug DUIs in the state, that's tough to get because according to Kentucky State Police, all police agencies submit their arrests to KSP, but the DUI arrest won't say whether it was alcohol or drug related. Hmm. And this is something that you're hearing not just from Williamsburg police, right? Well, Amber, you know, we've been working on this story for about a month, so every police agency that we've been going through the past month, we've just been asking the question, mm -hmm. and not a single one has said anything different than what Williamsburg police were saying. Wow, mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah. Miranda, thank you. Thank you. Goal experts across the nation have gathered here in central Kentucky to talk about ways to help the industry survive. Coal Prep 2015 is being held at the Lexington Center in downtown Lexington. It's the only annual trade show in the nation that focuses on the coal industry. Industry leader Maureen Healy is there encouraging coal supporters to talk to their elected officials. They need to let their views be known to their local and state officials. We all know that politics are local and elected officials do listen to their constituents more than anyone else. And they need to let it be known the jobs that will be lost, the communities that will be shut down. Coal Prep 2015 continues through Wednesday.